<coughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Michael. How you been doing today? Very well, very well. How is everybody today? I <laughs> myself, I'm always good. I do not know about anybody who's listening or watching. Uh, but I'm assuming everybody are excited to see you presenting and teaching us about new tricks about multiple units, apartment buildings, joint ventures, anything, whatever you know, right? Awesome. Perfect. Looking forward to sharing. So that's great. <laughs> so should we just talk about, chit chat about yourself, what you've been doing and or just jump it to the, to the topic right away? What do you whatever, think? Whatever you like. I know it's still a little bit early. People are still kind of coming on board. So I'm more than happy to share whatever, uh, whatever you... So let's, so, let's, yeah. let's do it, Michael. Yeah. How long have we been knowing each other? I do not want to say, you know, I could have, a, you know, kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really don't know, Yurik. I think uh, I'm going what, eight, nine years, somewhere in that vicinity? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we, we've been doing, you've been doing a lot of presentations for our organization, right, which I'm yeah. very, very glad, very happy, and I'm blessed with having you as a, one of the, you know, valuable uh, team members. Uh, so what exactly, what's your specialty is, Michael? Um, well, well, we've been in, investing in real estate since um, 2002. So we've got to kind of a, <laughs> a long, broad stroke of investing in residential, but our, our main focus um, for the last several years has been in apartment buildings, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the reasons why we did our presentation not that long ago about multifamily. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's been a fun gig. It's uh, investing in multifamily has always been a lot of fun. There's always great things and challenging things that come along with it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been it's been a great journey for myself for the last, now we're looking at 16 years. Wow, it's amazing, time flies, so. Uh, we're getting younger every day, right? Oh, that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I, I was having, you know, I, I always say we're getting younger because who cares how old you are? Because, you know, it's just only here in the mindset, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So how are you finding the investing in multiple units in Canada? Is it challenging? Uh, any kind of outcome and suggestions for anybody who will be considering such kind of option to invest? Well, it, it, there, there's lots of challenges in this currently. So the reality is finding really good inventory at this point is, is always a big challenge, good opportunities. Uh, and it's really, really important to have a really good investment team to help support you. So, you know, having good solid realtors to really mm -hmm. try to comb and find some of those deals that are available and, and trying to find some of those opportunities. And, and what I'm tending to find out there, um, you know, prices seem to be really high. The cap rates uh, are definitely very low. Mm -hmm. And so trying to find those really good golden nuggets uh, become a challenge. And then secondly, the, the other problem that you tend to face is just the financing side. Banks are not loaning like they once were, and it's becoming more and more challenging. And some of the stuff that we're seeing is somewhat ludicrous. And, and so again, as we referenced about having a good realtor, uh, from my perspective, you really do want to have a good commercial mortgage broker as well. It's uh, mm -hmm. You want somebody on your side, really be able to defend and support you um, but you really need to prepare kind of for worst case scenario. They're just really not loaning to the levels that they once were. And obviously they're mitigating a lot of the risk and concerns that they have in the marketplace. And, yeah. So that's kind of one of some of the challenges that we're fight facing in the multifamily side. But again, you, you know, any, any time you're dealing in, in real estate, there's always challenges, but the, more importantly is you gotta be optimistic and finding ways to overcome some of those challenges. And there always are ways. Um, and sometimes you just have to be very creative and, and that's it. And myself, I've been through this, uh, been investing for such a long period of time and, you know, we've ridden higher interest rates, lower interest rates, recessions, all sorts of stuff. And you kind of learn from a lot of those experiences to help support you uh, as you continue to acquire property. So, yeah. So what I can add it also, you, you should have it, you know, full team of the professional, you know, professional team members in order to help you in any aspect, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, definitely right yeah, I, like personally if i have any deals leads and everything i can rely on you personally and yeah. i believe that any any member of our organization and whoever is watching not even by being a member which is our membership is what we believe it is providing as much value as possible right yeah and absolutely yeah and I, and I think that's a big piece it's like for a lot of people that are just getting started investing in real estate. And, you know, today we're talking about uh, joint venturing. 
Um, mm -hmm. But for those that are getting started in investing in real estate, I highly encourage, you know, get some people to help support you and have mentor you, um, you know, people that you can connect with. And, you know, if you're having challenges or struggles, um, you know, that's the one thing I love about uh, Street Smart uh, Real Estate Investment Tech Club. It's, 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 you know, you have a good group of individuals there to help support you. And the same thing also goes with myself. Don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. The, the one thing we want to make sure is, that everybody's successful in this and you know i hate hearing stories that people are losing a ton of money and uh again mm -hmm. that's what what that's what we're all about is we're here sharing information and, and helping support each other to become successful in this journey so so why won't you tell more about uh our recent venture investment network with with our company how do you see it in, in, sorry and repeat sorry repeat that again yeah sorry investment network yeah what about it uh, we have joined the forces, right? Yes. So we've been working closely with Yarek and his group. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a group out here in BC called the Investors Network. Um, and there is some of the guest speakers that were presenting earlier, I believe today, and I believe even yesterday are part of this group. So they're the founding members. So we have uh, a mortgage broker, a realtor, a uh, property manager, a lawyer, myself, and the group tends to meet usually once a month. And so this group is really dedicated and focused to investing and helping people support uh, people investing in real estate. So it's more of an education platform. It's a membership group. Uh, but by working closely with Yarek and his group, everybody's able to participate. So um, every month, these things are recorded on Facebook uh, Live. Um, mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't know what Investors Network is and would like to know more you about it, know, just what about it. Sorry? <laughs> They will know. <laughs> they will know. So perfect. Yeah, more than happy to to share that information because there's some great topics and great information that's there. So okay. Yeah. So for for whoever is watching this presentation, I will now let everybody know we are recording the presentations will be available on different sort of media. So don't get surprised that uh, there will be no yesterday. <laughs> just <laughs> just for for clarification, right? Because we wanna utilize and share. The, whatever Mr. Michael will be providing to us, men and people uh, as broad as possible. So what kind of topic are you going to cover to, at this moment, Michael? Well, for me, it's about uh, joint venturing. So for a lot of people that are just getting started in, in real estate, I shouldn't say getting started, but may have been in a position where they're tapped out. So they've maybe purchased their first, second or third property, or even after their first property in this day and age, um, mm -hmm. they get stuck and they, they want to invest more, but they don't necessarily know um the next step so they've heard this thing about joint venturing and what it's all about and so my topic is really about creating a successful joint venture partnership or relationship so i'm not going to go to the fine minute details but i'm kind of going to be talking in generalities but more okay. importantly i want people to understand what are what are each side kind of looking for and what to make sure that when you're presenting to them to understand what how the relationship is needing to work so you can have a successful joint venture relationship for your you know, your second transaction or your 30th transaction. Um, okay. But there's some really key components that I've learned over the many years of doing this myself. Um, and for most people that are really wanting to turn, make real estate kind of a, a, either a full-time career or a, a good solid part-time career, um, that's really what my topic is going to be really highlighting on. So, so moving further ado, can we? Change. Absolutely. Let's do okay. it. Perfect. Let's do it. Sounds it's good. It's all yours. Okay, so let me just transfer you over to our, my slides so everybody can kind of see what's going on. Or here. Or there, you can do it. Yeah, sounds great. No, here, here, what I'm saying. Sorry, say that again, Yarek? Or here. We will or be here. also using on the podcast just to let everybody know. Oh, perfect. Yes, perfect, perfect, good. Okay, so we're all ready to go here. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody. It's, uh, you know, out here in Vancouver, it's a beautiful sunny day. Um, and again, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to take a moment out of their schedule to, to listen to this presentation. And, and to me, I believe this is a, a really great and important, uh, topic for people that are wanting to invest in joint venture or, you know, have a successful joint venture business. Um, so for me, I tend to like to share a lot of my experience experiences and, and a lot of the things that I kind of present is really based on that. And, and so, uh, again, don't hesitate to answer or ask any questions, especially at the very end of the presentation as I'm more than happy to answer, okay? So uh, again, topic, creating a successful joint venture. And, and for a lot of people, you may or may not know what a joint venture is, and you may hear of partnerships or those types of relationships, but what is 
a joint venture partnership and what what exactly is that so i thought i'd kind of share a little bit about what the definition is so everybody's aware of it so what is a joint venture a joint venture uh again often abbreviated as a jv so you'll hear that as a kind of common theme um, is an entity formed between two or more parties to undertake economic activity together so two parties on an economic activity doing it together the parties agree to create a new entity by both contributing either equity and they then share in the revenues, expenses, and control of the enterprise. Now, a joint venture in most cases uh, is really focused on one specific transaction or one business entity. Um, and, and so that is a joint venture, a relationship for one specific project, um, where a partnership may be two companies partnering together. So those could be, that's really kind of the, the key definition of kind of what a joint venture relationship is. And from it comes to the real estate side, um, it really is kind of more of a money partner and then at the same time the real estate expert But it doesn't always just have to affiliate itself joint ventures don't just affiliate itself for real estate It actually happens all the time in different business ventures as well. Just a lot of people may not Have heard of it. So let me share kind of an example of how kind of a joint venture actually works so just using a set, an example and some of the benefits of joint venturing and what are the benefits of joint venture partnerships so let's take a look at Susie here um, and again, that's a fictitious name, obviously, but Susie is a, is a chef at, at a high end restaurant. And, and for her, she's always had this passion and this dream um, that she's always wanted to open up her own restaurant. And, and that's kind of a goal of hers. And she's always wanted to to do that. Um, the one problem for Susie is she's working really, really hard. But for the cost associated to actually open up this restaurant, um, she just doesn't have the capital or the money to do so. She really knows how to run a restaurant. She knows the front end, the back end, managing all the financials on it. Uh, she knows everything there is to run a, a restaurant. She's been doing this for maybe 15, 20 years. She's extremely experienced. It's just that now her next step is to have that goal of opening up her own restaurant. And that's her, that's her goal. So for her, she has the passion. She has the desire. The issue that she has, she just doesn't have the capital. So then again, She's looking out for somebody that may be able to help her. And we'll call this guy Mike, Mike the real estate, and Mike the investor, okay? And I like the name Mike for many reasons, uh, but Mike the investor. So Mike Mike here has known Susie for a very long time, maybe have eaten at her restaurant several times and knows her passion and, and, and her desire to, to opening up her own restaurant. So Mike, as much as he loves eating at the restaurant and loves, uh, uh, loves being part of a, a maybe a possible a business relationship with him he really does not want to run a restaurant by any means that's not his goal and his his focus his focus is on making a good return on his investment so for him he knows susie he knows that she can do this but for him he doesn't have the time and energy or even the passion to run a restaurant but what he does see is he sees that susie can do this and do all the work and the and uh, do all the work take care of the restaurant can manage all that stuff and what Mike can do is provide the capital to help support Susie in her business venture. So in this relationship, this is a joint venture in regards to opening up a restaurant where Susie does all the work, Mike is actually the investment partner, and then really at the end of the day, the focus is to make sure that they're both making a good return. So it is really a win-win relationship because Susie gets to live out her dream, Mike's sees the benefit of, of Susie and all the passion and work and she and he has confidence that he's gonna she's gonna take care of his money. So with that being said, he invests with her to do this venture together. So it works out really, really well. And there are so many businesses out there that are doing joint venture relationships out there other than real estate. And this is just kind of an example to kind of get you outside of the thought process that it just is actually focused on the real estate side of things. It happens every single day, okay? So again, one of the things that you wanna look at, if you are wanting to be that real estate expert, okay? That's that's what you're looking to do. And you're looking to raise capital to, to do acquisitions yourself. These are some of the key things that people are actually looking for, or what money partners are actually looking for, okay? And you know, for those of you that are listening, I highly encourage you to take some of these notes because these are really, really important to understand and go to the part money partner's uh, um, mindset in regards to what they're looking for. First and most part, you know, the reality is they're looking for kind of time and financial freedom. So for a lot of cases, they don't necessarily have the time. You know what they have? Um, they don't necessarily have the time or they're looking for more time for themselves. 
And at the same time, they're looking for a little bit more financial freedom. So if they are maybe wanting to invest in another project or an investment project, they're trying to generate some type of revenue stream to help support them that gives them a little bit more time with their family or friends or a different type of lifestyle. And again, more of a financial freedom for themselves. What they're also looking for from the real estate expert is trust. They want to be able to trust that individual. And I'll be talking a little bit more about this because this is a real, real important one is the trust factor. Um, and when it comes to a survey, you know, trust is the most important part. That more than anything, more than return on your investment. The one thing the money partner is also looking for is they want to leverage other people's time, OPT, or other people's experience. And based on both of those things, you know, the money partner may not have the time to do so. And, and that happens more often than not. They've got families or they're busy with work. So they want to leverage the, the expert, the money, the real estate experts uh, experience and time because they tend to know what they're doing. Not much different than Susie, the chef. She knows how to be a chef. Mike does not know how to be a chef or manage anything about the restaurant. So they're leveraging that experience to help support what his goal is or Mike's goal is and that would be a good return. The other thing that the investor is looking for is cash flow, be it present and future, both pieces. So they're not gonna invest in a business that really has no present. The reality is who would invest in a business that makes no money? And nobody would. And so whenever you're looking at a particular project, you wanna make sure that this investment, this business that you're investing in, regardless if it's a condo or a townhouse to a multi-unit apartment building is actually a solid business that actually generates income. If it doesn't, chances are your money partner is not going to be very interested. Okay. And if it doesn't today, what is the plan for the future to be able to generate that income? So they're going to be looking to you to understand what the business plan is. Okay. They are in a lot of cases for most investors, most for our most money partners, they really want to be hands off. You know, they've got a job, they've got kids, they're they're busy people. So for them, it's something really ease of management. In a lot of cases, they don't really want involvement in it whatsoever. So just be aware of that. These are some of the key things. Um, and even more importantly is they're looking for a better return on their investment than they are currently getting. Um, so for a lot of people and a lot of people that I've even talked to in the past, you know, they'll look at their RSPs or their GICs and they're making three, four or five percent. They want to see something that is a little bit more of a better return on their investment than what they currently are saying. Um, in a lot of cases, even recession protection for a lot of people, um, really, really important. So this may or may not be feasible for a lot of your investments, but you got to make sure that they understand that it is an investment. And, but for some people, recession protection is something of the concern. We saw a lot of this back in 2009, where the stock market started to take a dip, and it really impacted a lot of people's money. And so for them, they were really concerned for any investment that they were looking at, uh, that it was a little bit more recession proof. Um, the thing that's beautiful about real estate, it's something that's tangible, something you can touch, you can knock on. It's a solid asset, it's bricks and mortar. So in, in a lot of cases, you've got a solid asset that is there, something that you could feel and touch versus a piece of paper. Uh, that you can tend to get from, from stocks. And more importantly, what the money partner is looking for is just more control. And when I say control, it's not control of the investors, it's more control of their own financial well-being. And so with them, they feel that they're participating in a project, um, they've, they're kind of taking control of their, their financial well-being, and those are some of the real key components that a lot of money partners are actually looking for, okay? So those are some of the really key criteria. okay? Now, getting started in real estate, for a lot of people that are looking to do this, and the mindset of these money partners are a few things. They may have always had an interest in investing in real estate. They may have the capital. So and this is some of the things that they have. They have equity, equity from their home with a line of credit, a HELOC, okay? So many people may have heard of it. Uh, HELOC, Home Equity Line of Credit. So that's what it stands for. And for a lot of people, and if I look at a lot of the people in the Vancouver marketplace, um, a lot of people have made a lot of money in their personal residence, got lots and lots and lots of capital um, available, and some have set up lines of credit and some have not set up lines of credit, but they do have the capability of doing so. So that's one of the things they have. The other thing is they tend to have the capacity to borrow for mortgage approvals. So when I'm talking about more single family homes, these individuals, these have the capability of actually getting more mortgages approved because they may only own their personal home, uh, but at the same time, they may, they've got a huge equity, equity base. Um, at the same time, they have great credit, have the ability to acquire more properties. So that's tends to be the second thing that they always have. 
Um, and even more importantly, they have a drive to improve their financial f uh, future. For a lot of people that have owned their own personal residence, and, and if you go back 5, 10, 15, 20 years, even 30 years from now, home values have all increased. They always have increased. And if they've all, you know, if I, I've heard, if I had a dollar for every time I heard this is, if only I started 20 years ago or 10 years ago, my financial well-being would be so much better if I owned another piece of property. I hear that every it nonstop. So for them, they see the benefit of investing in real estate and they want to improve that. And they always say, if I bought two or three properties back then, I would be so much better off. The reality is the best time to buy real estate is today. So that's, that's the fortunate part. So these are some of the things that they have, but the things that they don't have is number one, they don't have the experience or the knowledge in real estate investing. They don't have that capability or that information. So for them, that is a con. They don't necessarily have that. So that's a big trouble, a big challenge. So they can take the time to educate themselves, um, learn. But the biggest problem, again, time is always a big issue. They don't have an understanding of the real estate market or even where to invest. I see this all the time. People that are looking to invest in real estate, they want to get into their own backyard because that's all they know. They know nothing else. They don't know other markets. So, you know, when you look in Vancouver specifically, you know, trying to find properties that cash flow is very, very difficult. So they just make the assumption and they accept it that all real estate investing does not cash flow. But if they started looking outside of their hometown, they would see there are tons of opportunities that generate a lot of cash flow, but they're just too afraid to take that next step or to go somewhere else. And, and that's one of the biggest weaknesses that I see from a lot of starting investors. The other part they don't have is a network of people to help them purchase, and that's an investment team. So again, realtor, mortgage broker, property manager, mentor, um, all these individuals, they just don't have this investment team in place and they don't actually know how to even begin. In a lot of cases, they tend to just hire the residential realtor that maybe if they use for their personal residence, but a, a, a realtor that is in the investment world is very, very different. And you want to find an, a realtor that is specifically focused and understands the world of real estate investing versus just your average realtor. So in a lot of cases, they don't have this investment team. They don't necessarily know who to connect with. And that's one of the biggest challenges too. Um, access to quality investment properties. And for those of us that have been doing this for a long time, the real great deals, the real opportunities are never actually listed on MLS. It's the deals that are kind of behind the scenes. It's those quiet deals that are never listed. They're discussed about with other realtors, other individuals, and those are rent, or those are the real, real opportunities. In a lot of cases, when it hits MLS, those are real, those opportunities have already been combed through for the most part. So those finding those really quality investment properties, these individuals are buying kind of retail and, and are paying kind of that retail price. And then even the biggest one and the biggest weakness that I tend to find from these individuals is lack of time. So because they have a lack of time, they don't have a lot of the experience, they just tend to settle in some cases and that can do them a complete disservice altogether. So these are some of the things that they have. These are some of the things that they don't have. And so when you kind of take a look at this, I kind of put this in kind of a, a mindset triangle. And so you can get a better understanding of exactly where people are starting to think. So the investor, the money partner tends to have the money. That's what they have. But what they don't have, in a lot of cases, they have the time, but they don't have the experience. So what a lot of people are looking at is trying to have the perfect triangle here in regards expert, time, and money. For the actual money or the investor, the real estate expert, what they have, they have the experience, they have the time, but their issue is the money. So there's always a missing piece. So by joining forces, all of these three pieces work together. So you, a real estate expert is providing time and expertise to help invest, and they're using the money partner's money. The money partner is taking advantage of the time and the expertise from the real estate expert, and then it's creating a great joint venture relationship to help secure it and make profits for both sides. And that's really what a lot of people are actually looking for, okay? So for a lot of people, for a lot of investors, and, and if for those of you that may or may have not spoken to a potential joint venture partner, I will guarantee you at some point in time, you'll meet an individual like this, okay? And there's kind of pros and cons. So for a lot of people that are wanting to do this on their own, um, they look at it in two different ways, okay? So this is, this is the money partner wanting to do it 
on their own. And the pros, if they went to do it on their own, is they make all the money. They get all the profit. If they did it all from them by themselves, they would get all the profits. They didn't have to split it with a potential joint venture partner. They're just going to make all the money on their own. The other part is they're going to be learning from their experiences. So yes, they're going to go and do this on their own, but their education is going to be kind of the school of hard knocks in a lot of cases, because they're going to be getting their hands dirty with their very first transaction and with a lot of experience, but they will learn from those mistakes for future acquisitions down the road. Now here's the con in regards to doing it on their own as well. First of all, they have no idea what they're doing. Absolutely none. They make make the assumption with this. And I, I kind of have this common joke that real estate investing is as simple as, you know, you go out, you buy a piece of property, you rent it, and then you just make a bunch of money. That's far the furthest from the truth. There is just so much more involved to it than that. And for a lot of people that are getting started in real estate investing, this is kind of the mindset. And so for them, they absolutely have no idea what they're getting themselves involved with. No matter how small or how big of a transaction you are, if it's a condo or a townhouse or an apartment building, it's a business you're purchasing. And for a lot of people, they don't look at it that way, which is a big mistake. And so when people start to really grasp that and understand that, that will be better for them. But they tend to find out later on, and in some cases, it'll cost them a lot of money. So they don't necessarily know what they're doing. The other part is they're not sure where good places to buy. Again, as I referenced earlier, they tend to buy in their backyard because that's all they know. So. The other thing is they need to commit time to managing the property itself. They don't necessarily need to do all the property management, but there's so much other stuff that comes along with it that it, again, it's a business. You have to manage the business. And if you think it's going to be a completely passive investment where you really have to do nothing, you're sadly mistaken because that is furthest from the truth. Okay. The other part is if they are looking to manage it, Sometimes they'll even consider managing it themselves. So they are actually a property manager. So I've never been a property manager before. How do I ensure I get good tenants? Well, there you go. You know, they might have met uh, Barb over there and, and Barb seemed like a relatively nice person to become a tenant of mine. Little does she know, uh, Barb is probably one of the worst tenants that she can, they can possibly rent to. Um, you know, they, they may tend to not do the credit check, the reference check, the criminal check, um, all, uh, all of those things. And they just kind of taken it from good faith. And for a lot of people, and if you read a lot of the horror stories that tend to come out of the media in regards to problematic tenants and destroying your homes, most of those circumstances is because uh, landlords have not taken the time to do their due diligence on that particular tenant. And that's where a lot of pain tends to come from. Okay. And then even more importantly, one of the big issues, what happens if things don't go right? So if something tends to happen in the property and they don't necessarily know what to do with it, with a the situation, then that's, that's a major con for them. So something that was supposed to be passive now is becoming a nightmare or a headache for them. So again, for, for a lot of investors wanting to do it on their own, they always make the assumption is why would I want to partner with somebody else where I don't necessarily uh, want to give any of my profits. Um, and I can just learn from my experience, but the reality is there's so many cons behind that and the, they don't find that out until after the fact. And those, that's the truth. Now, again, some of the pros and cons to doing a potential joint venture with a real estate expert, there's significant pros and there's also cons as well. So on the pro side, the, the money, the investment expert or the real estate expert is good. They're going to take care of all the management. You know, uh, the money partners, you know, really can get their hand held through the entire process as well. So for a lot and for myself, for people that are wanting to even invest with myself, um, if they want to learn the process, I'm more than happy to hold their hand through the entire process. And if they want to do their own joint venture, do their own business or acquisition down the road, I have no problems with that. So for a lot of cases, they're actually learning from the real estate experts so they can actually do a transaction. So, you know, do an investment with the money or with the real estate expert to begin with, and then they can do something on their own after the fund. The best part about dealing with a joint venture or a real estate expert is the real estate expert has experience in real estate investing. They understand all the, the goods, the bads, the uglies that tend to come with it, but even more importantly, they just know how to react to situations when they tend to, tend to come up. And that's why they're hiring you to begin with. You know, they share the liability if the investment doesn't go well as well. Okay. For those of you, this is very new to the investment, the joint venture side of things. You know, you make the profits if things go up, but at the same time, if things don't go well, you're also sharing in that liability piece as well. So absolutely both the money partner and the real estate expert share the profits and the liability either way. Okay. 
Um, at the same time, I can make a good return on my investment and don't need to do anything. So that's a significant pro. In a lot of cases, they will make better returns on their investment, you know, splitting half of the profits to the real estate expert and better than even some of the returns that they would get just from conventional investing. Um, and at the end of the day, they don't have to really do anything. That's what the real estate expert is doing. And in a lot of cases, by doing a joint venture, that investment now becomes a true passive, passive investment. Now, there are cons. Again, if you're partnering up together, of course you have to share some of the profits. It's a part, it's a, it's a joint venture relationship and you got, there is a little give and take. You're providing the capital and the other person is putting the expertise and time in there. So yes, there's splitting that's happening there. Uh, joint, the joint venture partner takes on all the major responsibility as well. Okay. So what happens on the money partner side? The money partner puts up the cash. And secondly, they also tend to qualify for the mortgage and go on title as well. So they take on some of the significant responsibility, but there's an agreement between the two to understand that if things tend to go a little bit sideways, that both, both partners are actually going to be sharing that responsibility equally together. So the reality for the, the money partners, there's always kind of this fear and greed. I want to get involved with it, but I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. But at the same time, I don't want to work with an investment partner because that means I got to share some of the profits with them, which I don't want to do as well. So this kind of this, this, this balance that's tending to kind of come from there. And, and the truth be told is for, for a lot of people, they don't want to do either and they just do nothing. But if people are willing to accept one or the other, either do it on their own, then again, there's more fear and more risk that tends to come with it versus involved getting themselves with a, a real estate expert that's there to help support them. OK, so the question for those of you that are on the line right now or on the call, um, you know, for those of you that are wanting to do joint venture partners and find money partners. And I get this all the time. Where do you find these people? Where are they? And you'll be surprised. They are absolutely everywhere. And, the, you know, constantly, you know, you can go to other real estate seminars or workshops or any of these types of places. You'll be surprised. There's lots of money that's all over the place. And people that are wanting to participate in projects, they just don't know who you are or what you do. Trust me, as you are looking for a money partner, that money partner is actually looking for somebody that is experienced in either real estate or a business or something like that because they want to give some of their money. They, they're looking for alternative investments to get themselves involved with. Other places to find joint venture partners, family members and friends, absolutely. This is kind of your closest network of individuals. And in a lot of cases, those are some of your best points to try. Church groups. Again, friends, I, I you know, when I look at church groups, they're definitely like friends and relationships there. Uh, Facebook, social media, um, that's kind of on the tail end. Um, there are opportunities. There's relationships that are always being had. There's great Facebook groups that I, that I, that I talk to all the time that people are looking for, uh, for, uh, investments to get themselves involved with, but really they're everywhere. And, and for those of you that are wanting to do this, um, the reality is I try to highlight that, you know, wherever you go and if you're at a barbecue or something of that nature, don't ever be afraid to share what you are looking to do or what you are trying to do. Um, and, and just to highlight, hey, I'm a real estate investor and I'm looking to purchase a bunch of properties. Now, again, you don't want to be perceived as a um, kind of a, um, a multi-level type of hard-nosed uh, salesperson in regards to constantly pitching people. You know, you don't want to be too aggressive, but at the same time, let them know let them know what you're doing and that you are looking for partners that you are wanting to partake in some of their projects. But again, not to be too aggressive. Okay, but they are everywhere. And like I said, the more you open up your conversation and let to let people know what you do, the more opportunities will become available to you as well. Okay, so I kind of was highlighting some of these things uh, earlier today. But what are money partners truly looking for in a partnership? And uh, this is a survey that I've done with a lot of my students, actually, um, over the last probably about 10 years that I've been doing this. And I always kind of reference, you know, get into the kind of the mindset of the money partner and ask the question, what is the most important thing that they're looking for? And it tends to be very close to this particular order. But in all the 10 years that I've been doing this, the number one key thing that money partners are always looking for is trust. And they want to be able to trust the individual. And they want to see, they want to build, feel confident that the, I, that the, that when they start to give their money to that individual, that that money is going to be coming back, that they trust that person wholeheartedly. That's more important than return on investment or any types of investment that you tend to have. They want to see that trust is there. And that's really provided by having 
clear communication throughout the entire process from the very beginning and throughout the actual relationship with your joint venture partner. Uh, number two is always kind of business plan. So what are the objectives and even risks identified? And I, I actually am a big believer that when you're going into any transaction, you got to really have a very clear entrance point in regards to a clear strategy and investment strategy going into your acquisition. And even more importantly is what's the exit strategy? And don't be afraid to share some of the risk with your investment partners because that creates more trust with them as well. So by sharing kind of the goods, the bads, the uglies and the risks that may be involved with this, you become much more open and much more trustworthy to your investor as well. And there's no point of hiding it. Like I said, if there's risks associated with it, share it mutually together and make sure everybody understands what they're doing in, in the long term. Okay. Uh, one of the things my partner is looking for is a track record, you know, experience, expertise, history, past performance. So, you know, that's what they're looking for. So for those of you that have acquired investments in the past, um, share some of your experience and knowledge and show them a little bit of a track record that you have. If you've never done this before, if you don't have capital, uh, if you've never had the capital but wanted to do joint venture partnerships, it becomes a little bit more challenging to have a track record. But part of it is you can share a lot about some of the things that you have learned or maybe you've taken some courses. But again, part of it is sharing that with them and say, listen, I don't necessarily have a lot of experience. I've taken this program and this course and I've learned by from this. I'm also getting mentored from a professional individual as well that's also helping providing some guidance. So not only am I looking at these deals, I have somebody looking at these deals for me before I present it to you to make sure that this investment is going to do well. Um, integrity, again, transparency and financial auditing as well. Uh, really, really important. You know, I think the key component is that you're providing those financials to them on a regular basis and that they can audit it accordingly. You know, for me and the way I like to manage a lot of my properties is I have uh, a single account for every property that I have and our investors I have the ability to look at that account at any point in time to see any transactions that tend to have. Um, and the other part that I also like to make sure is that I'm meeting with them usually every three months or every six months, depending on the relationship and depending on the project. And I review the financials with them in complete detail so they have that full transparency every single time. The other part is just the management side, um, you know, lots of ease, vested interest, performance based pay, conflict of interest. So you want to make sure that um, that from from a management perspective, that there's no kind of conflicts that tend to happen there. Um, so for them, they want to make sure that you are your investment is you're, you're getting paid based on the success of the investment per se versus just kind of squeezing all the capital out of the deal altogether. Um, so like the important part is that you again, it goes right back to the track record and making sure that you provide full financial transparency on this as well. Uh, security and more importantly, is just the limited risk that tends to come with it is, are you limiting the risk that's involved? And the way to kind of reference that, and my big belief is whenever you're acquiring property, it should always be below market value. You should always be finding those types of deals that provide that capital or that equity from day one. Um, this way it provides a little bit of a cushion in case the market tends to go down. Um, so what type of security are you providing in the investment to mitigate some of those risks, okay? Um, even more importantly is a common vision. What's the exit strategy? How, when? Um, and and that, that one's a real important one. And, and the money partner may have a very clear exit strategy and they may say, hey, I'm looking to retire in five years from now. So in this, I wanna be able to make X percent um, but at the end of the five years, I want to get out. Now, does that strategy there, that money partner's exit strategy, does that fit the same strategy that you have for this particular project? So it's really important that both are in alignment. If they are not, then they should really not be participating in that particular project. Or you may not, maybe that's not the right partner for you and to begin with. Um, of course, the ROI, they're looking for a good return on investment. Um, they wouldn't be investing with you unless they, uh, there was some type of opportunity and upside, okay? Uh, the other part that I highly, I highly reference is make sure that you're always providing financials. Um, and at the same time, you wanna be able to uh, provide a budget kind of on an annual basis to let them know how the project's performing. Secondly, what's the plan for the next coming year? And as you're doing your kind of your constant research on the property itself that you are also communicating with them what is going on with the project at any point in time. OK, so those are some of the key components that the money partner is always looking for. But the most important one, which is number one, is trust. If you don't have trust, they're not going to invest in you, regardless of what type of return on your investment. So part of it is making sure that you build a good, solid relationship with your money partner and let them feel confident in you. And if you're able to do that, 
then you'll be able to make sure you have a good relationship with them. So what are the real estate experts looking for in a joint venture partner? So look at it on the flip side as well. So they're looking for trust as well, open and clear communication. You're looking to ensure that your money partner is very open with you, is that they, number one, have the capital. Number two, they, they, they tell you very clearly what their goals and objectives are because you know, for a lot of people, the real estate expert may be looking at uh, an investment project and uh, they're looking at maybe a five year or a 10 year hold period, but your money partner is only looking for a one or two, but they've not disclosed that to you. So it's your job to make sure you're opening that dialogue there with the individual and having that very clear line of communication. Uh, also a relationship, a partnership where they're able to work closely together. Very, very important. And the way I always look at a joint venture relationship is in a lot of ways, it's like a marriage. You're committing to a marriage for a period of time that you're working closely together. You're looking at a starting point and at the end of the day, hopefully an ending point on the project itself. But hopefully things go so well that that project gets that capital gets reinvested back into a future project. So for a lot of the relationships, you're looking at a marriage that hopefully will continue on for many years to go. Um, realistic goals and objectives clear objectives that are realistic and obtainable. And, you know, that part of it is part of kind of the interview process uh, at the very beginning. You may have money partners that say, hey, I've got $10,000 and I want you to turn it to a million dollars within, you know, five years from now. Well, that's wonderful. I, you know, and if, if, if I found an investment that was able to do that, I, I would invest in that as well. Uh, but truth be told that your investment now may not be able to do that. So if that's what the money partner is actually looking for, um, you got to be honest with yourself. If you're not able to achieve that, I think you got to tell them, tell them point blank that this is not attainable and this is not realistic and tell them exactly truly what a more realistic and obtainable goal is. And if that doesn't work with the money partner, then it's best to not participate with them um, in this transaction. They should have a common vision and it goes right back to kind of its early beginnings here in this discussion, a very clear exit strategy, how and when, uh, transfer rights, market to buy and sell um, interest. So, you know, what is the t right type of market? What does that number need to be? Um, what's the value of that property need to be when it's kind of triggers a, a possible sale of that transaction? So it should have very clear common vision together. This is a relationship. This is like a marriage. So you're working closely together to make sure that everybody's all on the same page in this transaction um, together. Uh, integrity and honesty, I think the big part is just transparency amongst both sides. And, um, you know, everybody really is committed to getting these things done and they say, and they do what they say they're gonna do. So the money partner is gonna provide the capital based on what you've, pre you've uh, presented to them. And secondly, you are going to manage the property as you've communicated back to the money partner. So again, there's an expectation from both sides and there's gotta be integrity from both sides. Everybody's gotta stay committed to the timeframes, the investment, and even more, uh, more importantly, the responsibilities to ensure that this investment and this joint venture is gonna work very well together. Management. Trust and management abilities and willingness to stay informed on a quarterly basis. So from the real estate expert side, um, really the money partner has got to be available for these regular quarterly calls and just be responsible for if there's documents that need to be signed, that that's being done on a timely basis as well. So realistically, you'll see both the money expert and the real estate experts. There's very similar similar goals, but the important part is that everything is in alignment. And if you're finding that they're not and they're slightly off, a bit of advice you may want to make the decision that it's not really best for everybody to work together as well. So at the end of the day, it's kind of like a little bit of a huddle. You guys are there together. You're there to work together. You want to be successful together. And it's like everybody's got their own skill sets and responsibilities. The individual's got money. You've got the expertise. And by combining all of this together, you guys will be successful over the duration of this particular investment. Okay, so part of it, the money partner's perspective of the joint venture and what this tends to look like. Um, so really, the money partner is looking at five years of free labor. You know, you're the one that's going to do all the work. There's no responsibility for from the money partner's uh, end. Um, and then really, um, they're looking at experience in your field. You're you're the you're the expert, so you're the one that's got all the experience, and that you're also going to have access to quality properties. So from that perspective, they're providing you with the capital to get uh, to do all the work. You're the one that's responsible for this. You're providing all the experience and the quality. And at the same time, you've referenced and you said that you're going to provide a good return on your investment. That's the expectation. And at the very end of this investment, at, when it all comes to, comes in and it's done, uh, the profit and the risk is shared 50-50 mutually on this particular investment. 
Now, if I look on the flip side of things, the real estate expert on their perspective of the joint venture is that the real estate expert is providing free labor for the next four or five years. And again, I put five years there, it's just a time frame. it's not set in stone, it's whatever you've agreed to. It could be one year, it could be two years, it could be 10 years, but whatever that arrangement is, that's the time frame that has gotta be discussed because that is the exit strategy and that's the understanding that everybody's gonna be, uh, that you're responsible for a lot of that labor and the management side of things for that particular property. Uh, so you're responsible for the acquisition and management of that transaction. Uh, must consistently be researching to improve the bottom line of the investment. And this is an important one. It's great that you can acquire the property, manage the property, but your job truly as a real estate expert is to constantly be doing a lot of research to ensuring that that project is safe and secure. So if you look at some of the things that are, if I use like Alberta as a perfect example, they've just recently gone through a recession um, in the last couple of years and still can, in some cases still dealing with it right now. Um, so realis realistically, that's a, that's been a challenging time. That was your job around 2016 to say, hey, something's of an, of an issue here. We may wanna sell or refinance or do something here because we're seeing little issues in this particular project. And that is the responsibility of the real estate expert to constantly be monitoring what's going on in that market. So you're also as the real estate expert, the perspective is you're looking for people that are, have the ability to participate in quality investments. And then at the end of the day, you're not putting money down. You're participating in these projects for nothing down. What you're paying is you're paying for your, what your responsibility is time and experience. So your job is to constantly be monitoring this, managing this, and your, your proceeds is really your expertise and knowledge. And by sharing all that stuff in your time, you also get to share 50-50 on the profit and also the risk on that side as well. So it really works in, in favor for both sides, and I hope that makes sense. So if I kind of put it in a little bit of a slideshow, or a little bit of an example, this is really what it looks like. So the money partner, this is what the responsibility is. They provide all the capital, okay? They receive cash flow payments, and they also receive market updates, okay? So that's the individual's responsibility. That's it, they provide the capital, they need to be available for financial reviews for, and also receive cash flow payments, and they tend to receive market updates, and that's coming from the real estate expert, okay? Uh, so they've put all that capital to support it. Now, the expectation from the real estate expert kind of looks like this, okay? So it's an execution of a proven real estate system, okay? So for us as a company, this is what we do as Prosperity. We you know, we find our location, we do a, a big location analysis, property analysis, offer to buy worksheet, put a full investment package together, a due diligence system, property checklist, property management, tenant screening, bookkeeping, uh, prepare regular statements, and then we also pay cash flow at the very end as well. But that doesn't end there. There's more involved to this than just this. And as the expert, these are some of the other things that we do. You know, ongoing market research and data. So we're involved when we get involved with market monthly workshops and economic analysis, field analysis, you know, MLS statistics, licensed data, investment teams. We're constantly building on our investment team and expanding on it or improving it. Um, at the same time, we do our annual review, monthly newsletter, monthly market reports, third-party analysis. And really our focus is we make our investments decisions based on true economic uh, fundamentals. So as an expert, this is something that is expected from you. This is your role. This is what you're getting paid to do but at the same time, you're not putting any money into this as well. And if it all goes well, if it all works out well, you will benefit, and at the same time, the money partner is also gonna benefit as well. And it's a win-win between both sides. But this is typically kind of a, a simplistic format of what are some of the expectations are in a relationship, okay? Now, a typical joint venture partner structure, and a lot of people are not aware of maybe how it works. So this is kind of a typical structure so a down payment and mortgage qualifying. So the, for the down payment and the mortgage qualification process, that is usually the money partner. So you'll see MP there. So they're the ones that are actually qualifying for the mortgage and they're providing the down payment as well as some reserve funds as well. And that is their responsibility. Um, securing and managing the quality property, that is the real estate expert. So your job is to go and find it, a good quality property, uh, so you secure it, and even more importantly, you're constantly monitoring this and, and managing it accordingly to make sure that this thing is gonna be success, uh, successful. Um, the equity that is earned on the property, so that's any gains, it's a 50-50 split. Usually on the cash flow side, it's also a 50-50 split. And as I've referenced before, if there's risk or a liability that's also there, uh, that's also split 
50-50. So you generate, you also on the hook for the liability side, but also the profitability side, 50-50. So if I wanted to show you kind of maybe how a typical deal would look like, and I'll use kind of a, a real transaction. So again, here's just a, just a simple townhouse in Edmonton, uh, nothing overly fancy as you can see, okay? So the asking price say it's roughly 204,900 bucks, okay? And again, for me, and one of the things I tend to teach a lot is you try to find assets that have equity position from day one. The praised value on this thing came in at roughly around 197, okay? So the investment side on this property, so this is including down payment plus reserve fund, um, you're seeing an investment of roughly 49,925. Okay, so we know that the asking price was too high. The appraised value is at 197. So obviously they're asking a little bit higher than what uh, the appraised value is. Now, when I say you're looking for a good opportunity, this is kind of one of the things that I'd like to look at. So for me as, as an investor, I'm looking for opportunities where there may be a little bit of uh, desperation or a little bit of uh, challenges within the home. And, and so this property here, will purchase the property at 173,900 bucks. Okay, so we've got it at way below market value. So the equity from day one, we've got a $23,100 equity position from day one. And we know that once we've acquired this property, the market rent and, and after the expenses and everything like that, there's a cash flow position of roughly $305.74. So we know the property cash flows from the beginning. We're limiting some of the risk that's involved in this property because we're buying it with an equity position from day one. So that mitigates a little bit of the risk. And we know that the property is going to generate some cash flow out of this thing. So the investment again, and we'll show you how the kind of the strategy works in regards to the uh, investor and how the split works. Okay. So the investment required is $49,925. Okay. So, um, and if say, for example, we went to use a line of credit or the money partners use a line of credit for a lot of people just getting started, that's what they use. So the line of credit payments from the money partner, the true investment is actually not 49925 This is money that's being borrowed, but what they're actually paying and what they're actually using for this period is a line of credit. And that cost is about $146.05. And we'll say that we're going to hold this property for three years. So the true investment, the true investment from the money partner is $5,257.80. OK, so that's really the money partner's true investment because they've used the capital out of their home, but it's not truly that money. It's the money that they're actually paying. So how does the split work and how does this all look? So the money partner and the real estate expert profits earned. OK, so equity from day one, we knew that the property is going to generate twenty three thousand one hundred dollars. And if we held the property for roughly around three years, we have the mortgage pay down of roughly six thousand nine thirty two. At the same time, we talked about that little over uh, $305 of cash flow. Well, over that three year period, we've also generated $11,006. So the total profit after a three year time frame is roughly $41,038. Sorry, for $41,038. So the summary investment looks like this this is initial investment here is $5,257.80. And that's actually the true line of credit payments that the investor had actually put down. So as we look at this, the joint venture profits earned. So from day one, we generate 23,100. Mortgage pay down, 6,932. The cash flow is 11,006. So the profit is roughly $41,038 after three years, okay? And we're gonna say that the money partner side of things, the profit split of this, they take 50% of that. So the equity from day one um, is 11,550. So that's half of equity from day one the mortgage pay down of 3,456, and then also the cash flow side of roughly 5,503. So realistically, the profit per partner, so both the money partner and also the real estate expert is 20,509. So from the money partner side, their true investment is 5,257, and at the same time, they've also profited roughly $20,500 there, which is phenomenal, okay? So they've made a very good return on their investment, okay? So from the money partner's perspective, they made a return on their investment of roughly 390% or 130% per year, okay? And the real estate experts, even better, really they manage only their time. So the reality is it's infinite. So they've really put no money into this and they've made a profit of 20509 So for their time, they earned $20,000 of profit on that, okay? Now, the one thing we did not capitalize is we just talked about the equity from day one. 
But with this particular property, we saw appreciation of roughly 3% per year. So this appreciated profit at an additional 18,267. So the total forecasted profit was actually 59,305. So let's look at how that works if we add those numbers again. So if we split that, the additional appreciation is roughly 9,133, or the total profit per partner is roughly 29,642. So as you can see below, the money partner's ROI is actually jumped up to 564% or 188% per year, and the real estate expert is infinite, okay? So there's a reason why I use this as an example because this is an actual property and this is an actual transaction. It is one that I've done with one of my investment partners. And it's a property that we have since sold, but these are the types of returns that we were looking at. And so, like I said, when you've acquired the property well, you've managed it well, it really can provide a benefit from both sides. So in this situation here, if we look at it from the strategy, the money partner's objective, so for them, they were looking for time and financial freedom. So in this situation, did they get that? And the reality is yes. They had a trusting relationship and even more trusting uh, moving forward because this individual that we've invested with has purchased several properties since then. Uh, they did leverage other people's time and they also uh, use other people's um, experience as well. And that is the real estate expert. Um, in addition to generate cash flow present and future, absolutely. Is it hands off, ease of management? They had to get nothing involved with it at all. That was the real estate expert's job. Better return on their investment than currently getting? Absolutely. So you're seeing that as well. Recession protection, this one was. We got out of it actually just in time because it, it was in Edmonton actually, and we did sell it in 2016. So we constantly are monitoring that, pro those, er that those areas, and fortunately we made the right decision in regards to getting out. So yes, the prices may have gone down since we acquired it, is it back down to the level what we what we purchased? No, we would have still been in a very good position, but at the same time, we did secure and ensure that our profits were there. Was there control of the process? Yes, absolutely. So in a lot of cases, they were controlling in their financial future. They were part of the process as well. Um, they didn't necessarily have to be available for managing it, but at the same time, they worked very closely with the real estate expert to ensure that the project was gonna be successful and there's communication going back and forth. Now, when it comes to the objective of Mike, which would be me, time to do what I enjoy as well. And for me, one of my goals and the reason why I'm involved in investing in real estate um, is to have more time for myself and spending more time with my family versus kind of working at a J-O-B. And, and that's one of the main reasons I started investing in real estate uh, a long time ago, was so I can actually spend more time with my family. So that was absolutely a success. Um, also get a chance to have great relationships with a lot of your investment partners and not mine included. Um, always love working with other people. And, and like I said, that's the one thing is going down this journey. You really do build wonderful relationships and friendships going through this whole process mutually together. Um, as they're leveraging other, you know, other people's time and other people's experiences, I get the opportunity to leverage other people's money. And, and so as an investor, uh, as an expert, for me, that's a huge advantage because it gives me the opportunity to use capital that um, other people have to invest in some significant projects, okay? Um, also, at the same time, I got my hands-on experience. I continually learn all the time, and you'll find the same thing as well. As you acquire more and more properties, you are constantly learning and educating yourself because you're really getting your, your hands dirty and involving yourself through the entire process as well. Is there cash flow present and future? Absolutely, which is great. Um, and then creating opportunities for my families. You know, part of uh, part of the one thing that I really enjoy about real estate investing is you can really build a legacy for your kids. If you've got kids, it's it's a wonderful experience in regards to acquiring several assets that you know that as you build on this, you can pass these on to your family. So if it's transactions, and one of the things I love to do is use some of the capital of some of my sales, and I use that to purchase future properties on my own, then these are little nest eggs that I try to produce for my family as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same thing for you, but that's one of my objectives for my family. Recession protected, yes, somewhat. At the end of the day, my job is to make sure that, uh, that I'm constantly monitoring whatever investment that we're involved with in any market that we're involved with. So you can have a lot more control. It's where the markets, uh, be it in the stock markets or any of those things, uh, the reality is because it is based on paper, prices can drop and go up 
in, in a heartbeat. Real estate tends to not do that to the same level. Um, again, more control in your financial future, absolutely. You know, for me, I get to work closely with our investment partners, uh, our, our money partners, and then even more importantly, I can constantly monitor and I have a lot of control in making the right decisions for these investments as well. So the kind of big saying is team. You know, together everyone achieves more and there's no better saying than when it comes to a successful joint venture relationship like this. You get the chance to leveraging other people's time, other people's money, uh, other people's experience. And by using all that together, you can really create a wonderful partnership. So it kind of goes back to that triangle format that we referenced before. You both have mutually shared goals and outcome. And, and at the same time, you share the risk mutually together. So there's a vested interest for both sides. So it tends to work very, very well. Uh, I guess hassle-free, hands-off versus hands-on and participation. So for those that are wanting to do it on their own, that's great. It may be a little bit more risky if you're the money partner, but if you want to work mutually together, it can be a much more easier and simpler process and a little and taking some of that risk off uh, the, both each other's plates. So, uh, and, and even more importantly, you get a chance to get quality properties with great ROI. By accessing other people's money, you get to do lots, lots of several transactions. And at the same time, the money partner gets to use your experience and time to acquire some of these great properties as well. Both, part, uh, sorry, both partners gain wealth together and really truly is a win-win relationship. So the important thing is to make sure that you guys are able to work together, you guys to share the same commonality in regards to what your goals and objectives are, and that really it can be a very successful relationship, okay? Always love to leave kind of with a quote, uh, teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision. The ability to direct accomplishments towards a team's objective, it is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. And that's from Andrew Carnegie. So with that being said, I'm gonna conclude my presentation. I wanna thank everybody for, again for taking the time um, to listen. Um, and for those of you that have got questions or want to reach out to me, uh, always available. So my number is, is there and as well as my email address. Uh, and please visit us on our website as well. And, and more than happy to chat and, and answer any questions that you guys have uh, even now. So again, thank you guys all for the opportunity and I'll be available for questions at this point. So. Hello, Mr. Michael. Hey. Mm. <clears throat> Welcome back. <laughs> thank you. I was making a lot of notes and then I was making the screenshots of your presentation. I've been watching your presentation on a regular basis and there is always something new which strikes me and I'm very curious about the availabilities, right? So uh, right. there is information, prosperityinvestment.ca, phone number 604-518-0662. And we do encourage everybody to join our organization, streetsmart rei.com which is free membership right we are not about making money from the pretending that you can make, be successful investor but the, providing the value and mr michael can answer all the questions also there right uh this is investment network another venture and there is a portal which is brand new members dot this is investment network this is partnership with street smart and mr michael team of the investors, so I'm very happy about that. And honestly, let's conclude for today. Looking Perfect. forward to see you next presentation. And if anybody thinking about investing in real estate, if anybody thinking about uh, asking the questions about possibility to work with Mr. Michael and myself or his team or our team together, reach out, ask the questions. There is no shame to ask questions. If there are no question asked, there will be no answer, right? And then you can have your money on GIC account and, you know, lose some for inflate towards the inflation, right? <laughs> so, guys, very, very simple. You want to make money, you want to invest in real estate, contact Mr. Michael, contact Mr. Yarek, and we will be working with you and we will be very happy to see you on the board, right? Absolutely. Thanks for the time, guys.